Let's go through this. I'll use the board this way. Alright, so on this picture you have glycolysis, which hopefully from biology 112 you vaguely remember was sugar splitting into two pyruvates, right? Alright, up at the top we have some names for enzymes, they're all ACEs, right? Okay, so here's the trick. If you just learn what the enzyme does, you can label any enzymatic cascade. So let's start with the first one, kinase. Does anyone know what a kinase enzyme deals with? It adds or takes away phosphates, because phosphate is energy, kinetic energy. So for this picture, if you see things that have phosphates, you'll be using a kinase enzyme. My favorite enzyme, dehydrogenase. From the name, can you tell me what it does? Remove a hydrogen. D, remove hydrogen A's. It removes H's from molecules. For today's class, we're going to cross off enolase, because I'm not going to ask you that on the test. But isomerase, I could. What does it mean to isomerase? It's making something else. So change its shape. Make an isomer of it. What do you think mutase means? Mutate it. Make it really different. It means so different, you're a mutant to some drunk Roman. So what we're going to do now is walk through this picture and see if we can figure it out. So step number one, can you tell me which enzyme probably did step number one? I have a vote for kinase. How did you know kinase was the right answer? I see a P there. That's a kinase enzyme because it's using phosphates to do something. But there's three phosphates. Who cares? It's just a P. All right? Um, no, actually, these are different. Glucose 6-phosphate, it looks like I just changed the first name, right? Which one up here might mean changing it a little bit? That's isomerase. Those are isomers of each other. But that's an isomerase enzyme. It's changing it a little bit. Right? Now, unfortunately, on my copy, it left something off here. I think I can figure it out. I went from a glucose, fructose 6-phosphate to now I added another phosphate. Therefore, which one's number three? Kinase, again. Because I added another phosphate to my molecule. Does that make sense? All right, because that's how we name them. Okay, we're not going to name number four. That's one you don't have to know. Instead, we're going to zip down to number five. There's actually two different enzymes in here. Let's do the easy one. Which enzyme would do the 2P thing? Kinase. Which enzyme would do this 2NADH thing? Dehydrogenase. Because I'm removing H's out of the molecule. So I'm dehydrogenating it. Make sense the logic there? That's all step five. So let's do the next one. So the next one. Let's see. Here I have some P's coming out. Which ones might that be? Kinase things. Because I'm doing with phosphates again. This is being kind of five and six. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. That's bad as not. All right. So, these. Okay, between six and seven. Let's see. That. Eh, okay, turns out somebody once decided that was a mutation. So they call that one a mutase, just because they do. Don't yell at me. We're not going to learn eight, but instead we're going to zip down to nine. Can anyone look at number nine and tell me what you think that may be? Well, you've got a kinase on the left. I have a kinase. Indeed I do. Because I have peace. So, for your studying skills, what enzyme is the main one used in glycolysis? Kinase. kinase. Almost all of them are a kinase enzyme, but maybe three. So on a test, if it affects a kinase enzyme, you know it's going to affect glycolysis. That's a mostly kinase activity. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the level. I'm never going to ask you to label them on the actual things, and not that mean yet. Maybe later. Right? <laughs> 
but you should know which enzymes are used in which step. So in glycolysis, you're going to use these enzymes to function. Yes? Are these categories of enzymes yes. we're using forever? They're, they're picked, they're going to call a family. So there's actually a different name in front of that each time. So glucose 6 kinase, blah, 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 blah. Right, Do you get that? Flip the page over. E. We're going to do this one now. Remember Krebs cycle? Yay. Yay. It's my favorite cycle. All right. I so prefer bikes. Okay. Dehydrogenase. Remind me again what that one did. Really anxious. Now, new ones. Synthetase. Also called synthetase. What do you think synth is saying? Makes or creates or form or produces, however word you want. All right? I'm going to let you guess on fumarase a little later. You're going to cross off a conotase. That's not one that I really care that you know. But the last one you should know, thiokinase. What do you think it does? Um, it's a phosphate. Right? So we have the same names you pretty much know from before. So let's go through step number one. Step number one on this page. Can anyone take a look at this stuff here and tell me which enzyme probably did step one? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. There are H's coming out of the arrow. Which enzyme would do H's? Dehydrogenase. Because I'm removing H's from the molecule. Can anyone find other steps on that which have dehydrogenase? Yes. Yes. But it's coming out of here. It's removing it from this molecule to put it there. Where else do you see dehydrogenases? Two, where, where? Three and four. Uh huh. Four and five. Yep, yep. Six and seven. Yes. Where else? Three, eight, nine. Hey, look at that. Dehydrogenase is on all those steps, because all those steps have H's appearing when they leave the molecules. Right? So I have dehydrogenase every place there's an H. Let's keep going. Hmm. Hey, look between 5 and 6. Can anyone guess what enzyme would be between 5 and 6? Kinase, right? Thiokinase, because there's a P there. Just call it five thio. Because it's a kinase, I'm okay with that. So it's a kinase enzyme because we're dealing with phosphates. That leaves fumarase. Can anyone guess where fumarase might be on this picture? Look at seven. What's the name of seven? Fumarate. So I'm going to use fumarase to do something to fumarate. That leaves only one enzyme left, which is this S1. Can you guess which step would be making something from other parts? To make number, number two, because I have to take a nine here with the one there to make a two. I'm adding together. So, that enzyme there, to get to step two, is producing, combining, so synthetase. So for a take-home study, which enzyme is the main one in the Krebs cycle? Dehydrogenase, right? It's used five times in one cycle. So kinase is the main enzyme for glycolysis. Dehydrogenase is the main one for Krebs cycle. Make sense? Now our last one is the ETC, electron transport chain, which you remember oh so well from Biology 112. Wires. All right. <laughs> so let's go through these words. Synthase or synthetase, what does that mean again? Creating, right? Now, reductase. To reduce, which means what in chemistry? Make more Gain electrons. Or to lose a proton, right? In this context. So oxidase would mean what? To lose an electron, or to gain a plus, or to use 
oxygen, right? Oxidase. So let's go through these boxes and see if we can figure out. Complex number one, the big first square. If you look, I'm taking something with a plus charge and I'm losing it, putting it out there. So what would we call this? I'm losing protons. We call it reductase. So I'm reducing the charge inside here. Look at complex three. Take a guess what complex number three is. A vote for reductase. Have a nod, have a smile. Yes. Number three is also a reductase. I'm doing H's out. Uh -huh. Look at number four. Reductase. What is, four? What is it? Reductase. Actually, it's not a reductase. Oxidase. It's an oxidase. How did you know? I'm oh, using yeah. oxygen. So number four, just because it's using oxygen, gets an oxidase number. That leaves a thing on the end, complex five. Look at that and tell me what you think it is. So I went in by left. Synthetase, because it's making ATP. Right? So in the ETC, what's your main enzyme? Reductase means two versus the other one. But reductase is the major enzyme you use in the ETC. So for studying, that's kind of what you want to do is remember which, which enzymes are used where. So these three are used in ETC, these bunch are used Krebs, these ones are used here. Just remember which one the main one for each thing is. So yes. that means when you need to know, we're not going to be applying Right. I'm not mean enough to just put, I guess I could. I could just put that on your test and fill it in. No, I'm not that mean okay. yet. Okay. Do you not want us to know the ones that you crossed out? Like do you not know the ones I crossed out? Also, do we need to know, I mean, if, you, if we say, okay, kinase, should we be able to say, okay, well, it adds to its weight class, right? Yeah. No. Not in that context. Okay. Just know which ones you use where. Do it okay? So you have something to study this weekend. When you're bored, you can add a lot of enzymes. But here's why you learn them. Because all the medical problems you're going to encounter in your nursing career are based on these enzymes. That something's wrong with them. That's why you have to know them. Prove that. Get out your packet of pain. Turn to the next page. We're going to do a case study that shows you why you have to know this. It's on rice. To show you why biodiversity, ethnic diversity, we're doing something on South Asian rice. All right, so what we have here is we have a vitamin called thiamine, or thiamine, you can say either way, or B1. If you kind of read through this, they talk a lot about chemical junk. But we're going to go down to the case history at the bottom of the page. Welcome to Malaysia. Right? There are three group of people that we're going to talk about, which are the Tamils from India, the Chinese immigrants, and the Malays. And what does everybody eat in Southeast Asia? Rice. Right. So they're all eating rice. Right? So we have three groups of people all eating the same meal in the same country. So classic science experiment. And let's see. They, eat, they cook it differently. So the Malays dehull it. The Tamils parboil it. The Chinese, insert joke, polish white rice imported from Thailand. So three groups of people all eating rice, slightly cooked differently. And if you go to the very bottom sentence, now we have deficiencies. The Chinese are the most deficient in the thiamine, meaning they're out of it. Uh, the Malays had a little bit. Nobody was deficient in the Tamils. So you have three different groups of people all eating the same food, but some are vitamin deficient and some are not. Good science experiment, right? So we got to figure out why being Chinese would somehow screw up your thiamine. So turn the page over. Now we got to figure out some vitamin biology, which you're supposed to learn in nutrition class anyway. Let's go through it. Tell me, can you store the vitamin thiamine? No. No, I heard. Let's figure out why not. Indeed. Let me find it. So if you remember your basic biology, some vitamins are called water-soluble, and some are called 
fat soluble. The only two options you have. So what we're going to do is figure out which ones are which. First off, let's figure out the biology. To be water soluble, does that mean you're hydrophilic or hydrophobic? To do a biology one's wrong It's hydrophilic or polar. Meaning you like water, you're found in water, you mix with water. To be fat soluble, you must be what? Hydrophobic or nonpolar, right? So the chemistry is different, is what it's getting at. Well, let's see if you know which ones are which. So someone name for me the four fat soluble vitamins. A, D, E, K. A, D, C, E, and K. Very good. There are only four vitamins which fall into this nonpolar group. A, D, E, and K. ADEC, or DECA, or KIDA, I don't care how you say it. Right? So, someone name for me oh, some water soluble vitamins. Pardon? B, B vitamins. B, C, C. C. Here, if it's not these four, it must be. So, the only ones I know are the four fat soluble vitamins because if I know they're not these four letters, they must be water. Alright? easy way to study. So let's go to our question. Question one, can you store thiamine? So look on the very first page, thiamine was known as vitamin what letter? B1. So thiamine is vitamin B1. Okay, so which category does thiamine fall into? Water soluble. Water soluble, because that sure isn't an ADEK. So can you store water soluble hydrophilic vitamins? No. No. Let's think through that. Where do you store your water? No. You don't. What do you do with water? Absolutely. You pee it. So your vitamin C you're taking just makes your urine expensive and yellow. Right? <laughs> you can't store water. Can you store fat? Yes. You bet. I do it every day. Right? So, vitamin A, D, E, and K you can store in your body. You can retain in your adipose tissue. These ones really you can't. You're going to pee it out with the next water load. So can you store thiamine? Answer? No. 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 You're just going to pee it out when you're done with it. So it's non-storable. So based upon that, you and your team have a minute to figure out number two. Why do only the Chinese deficient? They're all eating the same foods. Figure that out. What's talking about? They're all eating rice, which doesn't have thiamine in it. What? They're all eating rice, which doesn't have thiamine in it. Yeah. You can't store it. I'm surprised somebody doesn't come up with like a uh, slow release vitamin. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they do. Maybe. I don't know. But I think it's the way that they process it because it seems like that's the way that they. I don't know, the way that they process it determines the way that they absorb it, maybe? What do you think? Look, it's true. Do you think we'll need to know that diagram? What? Do you think we'll need to know that diagram? Probably not. Probably just the concept of it. I, just, I think he just likes drawing in his class. <laughs> For all those visual ones. Alright, let's go through your answer. So a little bit bio 101. I was a plant major, so I, I kind of like this stuff. But here's my attempt to draw a rice grain. Just be the same for wheat, same for corn, same for oats. They're all the same if they're grain. So you have three parts to a seed, basically. You have the outside, which you call the seed coat, also called the hull. You have a layer inside of it they call the alurone, to sound fancy. And you have a thing inside, which is called the endosperm. So all your grains have three parts. So the trick is what's in them. What's the seed coat made out of for most grains most of the time? Fiber is the most common one, which means cellulose. Right? That's why there's corn kernels in your poo, because it's something you can't digest. Right? So, what's endosperm, the inside, made out of? 
starch. Popcorn is you're forcing the endosperm to explode to the outside. So you're making a starch kernel blow up. Right? So what's the allurone made out of? Vitamins. Vitamins and proteins. So we'll call it protein, which vitamins are. So in a typical grain, like rice, you have cellulose on the outside, which you call fiber. You have starch, which is sugar, on the inside. And you have this layer in between, which is proteinaceous. Right? All of them are the same way. So let's go back to our three groups of people. Look how they cook. What kind of rice did the Chinese eat? So the Chinese ate what kind of rice? Polish. Let's see, blah, 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 polish. What color? White. Okay, so which part of this is actually white? When you do popcorn, which part's the white part? The endosperm. So to polish rice so it's white, what do you take off when you polish it? The seed coat and the polyurones. The only thing you're eating is a potato, right? Pure starch. Where were the vitamins located? There's no vitamins in starch right here. So when I polish my rice, I remove the area that has the vitamins. All you're getting is starch, right? So therefore, they would be deficient because they're not eating any of it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Look at the Tamils. The Tamils had no deficiency. How did they cook their rice? Right? They parboiled it. So that implies they put the whole rice in a pot with a lid. So if I put the whole rice in, what am I also getting from it? I'm just holding it. I'm going to be getting the fiber, the starch, and if I put a lid on it, what does that keep in the water? The vitamins, because they're water soluble. All right. Look at the Malays. They were in between. What did they do to their rice? They hold it. They hold it, which means they start taking off layers. If I took off the whole and it tore off part of the allurone, I would reduce the vitamins, right? Mm -hmm. So the concept here is even though they're eating the same food, by removing the outside, they remove the vitamin source from the food. White rice, white bread has no vitamins because you remove it when you take off the allurone. Yes? But parboiling damages the nutrients. It does. So but you still get the vitamin out of it more so than if you eat polished white rice. Is there something there? So, okay, it's great job versus right. boiled Right. Make sense? So white rice is as nutritious as a french fry, which means it isn't. There's no biological difference between a potato and white rice in terms of nutrition. The catch is number three. Now you have to take that chart you just cussed me out about doing. Uh-oh. <laughs> and try to figure this out. To do this one, go to the first page again and read right here I'm going to highlight. What enzyme does thymine activator cofactor? What is it? Read this part again for me. Dehydrogenase. So go to your sheet. Which process uses dehydrogenase enzyme? The Krebs cycle does, doesn't it? So in English, if I run out of vitamin B1, I stop doing my Krebs cycle because the Krebs cycle requires dehydrogenase enzymes. Make sense? So let's do that. Let's draw on the board the three steps for making energy. So if you remember from Biology 112, glycolysis, Krebs, ETC. Ring a bell? If I run out of dehydrogenase enzymes, which one am I going to stop, you said? So I'm going to turn off the Krebs cycle because that's the one used in the Krebs cycle system. Specifically, it's number one. That's pyruvate dehydrogenase. Right? The whole cycle stops because I can't do the enzymes. Makes sense? For one little rice plant, you stop doing an entire step of metabolism. Would you switch to using uh, anaerobic? Let's find out. Good question. So for discussion three, they would stop the Krebs cycle. That's where the dehydrogenase is used. Now let's do question four, which answers Devin's question. So I'm going to translate this for you. If you run out of the vitamin, you get more lactic acid in your body. So let's go back to biology 112. 
What makes you produce lactic acid? No oxygen. No oxygen. So let's review. If you do all three steps, that's aerobic, right? Mm -hmm. But if I can't do all three steps, you learn that there's another way, which you took glycolysis, and you directly produced what? Lactic acid. Lactic acid. And you call that? How about that? <laughs> So the poor Chinese, because they're running out of the enzymes for Krebs cycle, can't do aerobic metabolism. They're breathing fine, but they don't have the enzymes. So their body has to instead do fermentation anaerobic and produce this. So their lactic acid levels would go up because they can't do aerobic metabolism because they lost the enzyme. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's why you had to know the enzymes to figure this out. <coughs> Uh, you become acidic, so it means you have to pant a lot to blow it away. So your breathing rate would go up, but that continues and your kidneys have to flush it, which means you have kidney failure eventually. <clears throat> but probably not just for right now. But it's going to have to be good. Make sense? And for question three, that's because they're anaerobic. I'm sorry, four, that's anaerobic. So let's go down to question six. We're going to skip five for a second. What this says in English is the more fat in your diet, the less thiamine you need. Why might that be? Why would more fat be less thiamine? Chinese stored in fat? That's not water cycle. What about it? You burn more fat. Let's look at this picture again. Remember this picture? So on this picture, where is the thiamine located? What process uses thiamine? And where's that at? That right here, right? Okay, let's look over here. What's the saying here? Is that using Krebs cycle at all? No. So I don't have to use the Krebs cycle to burn fat. I can just burn it separately. So the more fat in my diet, the less I have to burn sugar. That's what your diabetic is doing, right? They don't have sugar to burn, so they're burning fat. So the higher my fat, the less sugar I have to burn, so the less thiamine I need. Make sense? But what would you be making as a waste product if you did this? Ketones. You'd be making ketones. Yes? Maybe I was not paying attention okay. to I went well on it, but yes. uh, I thought that when you were pulling energy from fats, mm -hmm. that you'd be breaking it down and basically jumping into the Krebs cycle at different points. You do, and that's after actually the uh, kinase enzyme they're talking of the dehydrogenase. So you'd be coming in basically after the synthetase, which is just after the dehydrogenase. Okay. So you're just right, you join it at a different step. Okay. It's a separate enzymatic step, so you're okay. And the timing only affects that one particular dehydrogenase, right. not the one that's in there. Not the other one. So, okay. So for this class, we just kind of them together. So it just okay. enhances the roadblock. Right, it makes a roadblock. Right. So we go back to this. We found out that I'm going to not do aerobic metabolism because I'm out of thymine. So I can't do crab. I found out then I can still burn fat for energy just like a diabetic would. I make ketones. Which then brings us to number five. If you have cancer, you will burn more thymine than if you don't. Can someone tell me why cancers require more thymine than non cancer Indeed. How, what do cancers do? How do you know you have one? Kill cells. They grow, right? What does it take to grow? Energy. energy. So let's review biology 112. How much energy do you make if you're anaerobic? Like two, right? How much do you make if you do all three? So if you're a cancer, which one do you want? You want this, right? So cancers want more bang for their buck, so they want thiamine so they can do all three steps and magnify the energy so they can kill you. Right? Yes? They do. If you're done blood and sugar, that's what they do. Yeah. In this case, thiamine is actually used by, uh, cancer use thiamine as a basically a growth factor. So the concept you want to take home with is that if I knew dehydrogenase from my chart of doom, I would know that's going to affect the middle stage of my metabolism. That's the connection you want to do. Make sense? So let's do one more to practice this skill. Keep turning the page. This one's even easier. 
Got a girl. Lots of problems. Can't do much. Muscle weakness. Level five. They put her on a treadmill. Bad things. But look what they found out. Number one. We have an increase in serum lactate. So tell me again what lactate means in biology. Well, yeah, it does. In this case, sugar, sugar glucose, this. Oh. Lactic acid is also written as lactate. They're the same. So not that you have to care. So if she's increasing serum lactate levels, that means she's doing what? She's doing anaerobic metabolism. She's, she's not producing a lot of energy. So what would her symptoms be? See? We have muscle weakness, low tolerance, all those things you learned in 112. I'm going to run out of energy. I'm going to get sore. I'm going to hate you. Right? But we're going to go down, as a doctor would, the next paragraph and figure out why. And look what they found. Look through here. Look there. A word you know. She doesn't have a reductase enzyme. Go to your sheet of pain. Where do you find reductase enzyme? The electron transport chain, right? There they are. So if you don't have reductase, you can't do what? You can't do electron transport chain, therefore you can't make energy aerobically. So what do you end up doing? You end up making it? anaerobically. It's the same problem as the other case, just with a different enzyme affected. So she lost her reductase enzymes. The other person, the Chinese, lost her hydrogenase enzymes. Make sense? That's why you're keeping this chart in your head. Right? It's the same logic. So if I don't, can't do all three steps, I end up making more anaerobic metabolism. Make sense? So we're going to skip kind of these questions. We're going to go to one more. Let's get the last one for today. Trust me. We have another one with enzymes. So I want you to look at the fasting blood data here. We're going to do a little science. Tell me, medical terminology people, what does hypoglycemia mean in English? Low blood sugar. Low blood sugar. Okay. So if you have low blood sugar, um, that means your cells won't have any energy. How would they stay alive? What would they burn to stay alive if you don't have any sugar for them? Fat. Well, let's see. Is that true? Do you see any evidence of fat burning? Right here. Ketones, okay? So she's burning fat. She's burning some other credit you don't worry about. Okay? But the problem is they found this weird liver in her. Right here. The liver was enlarged. So she doesn't have any sugar, she's burning fat, her liver's getting big. Let's figure out why her liver's big. Go down to the liver biopsy. Can anyone look through that and tell me specifically this line here, we can stain. What does that say in English for you? Let's see. What does positive material removed by amylase mean in English? Yes. Let's review your chart you're supposed to know. Amylase digests what? Starch. Starch. So carbohydrate material that is removed by amylase is meaning starch. So it says her liver is full of starch. If it's full of starch, why is there no sugar in her blood? Because isn't sugar supposed to be lysis into sugar, starch into sugar? Yes. So what happens if it's not? She has all this sugar in her liver and none in her blood. What's that tell you is the problem if it's stored but not getting used? It's not leaving the liver. Not leaving the liver. So what kind of word are we having a problem with if we can store it but not remove it? The problem is, is that a genesis word or a lysis word I'm having the problem with? Lysis. I'm having problems with glycogenolysis. I can't get it out of my liver to put it back into my blood. Does that make sense? If you were starving, you would use up the liver to feed your blood. Here, I, my liver's full of money, starch, but I don't have any in my pocket. Right? So look at these two enzymes down here. You don't know them because they're not on your list. Let's see if you can figure out which one is the problem. 
So which one of those do you think is the one that's causing damage? This one here, the top one, the one that's not working. That's supposed to do the lysis from your liver to your blood. The other one does the genesis. And what do you know about it? It's normal. Perfectly fine. So in English, she can store all the sugar she eats, but she can never get it back again. Cool, huh? It's like your cooking account only takes deposits, you can never withdraw. That's basically what's going on here. Yes. So basically, what Mr. Carter's saying is it means that she can complete the very first death of yes. glycolysis and nothing else. That's it. She can only do glucose 6 phosphate. Yes. And this means she was dead when they took us to the liver. Or wait, no, it's just a liver biopsy. She just, yeah. You could die. This is actually worth the This is genetic. You're born with it, and a lot of people don't live very long. How did, so there's no way to fix it if they. Not this. The liver will eventually die off, but you would have to rely on what for energy if you can't get sugar. Uh, so they have ketone, potentially you're diabetic without the sugar brush. But the idea here is that I would have it in my liver, but I don't have it in my blood, so I can't lysis it back. What is it called? It's, um, they have multiple names. This one's usually called glucose-6 genetic deficiency. But there's another word that go with it. But it's basically this thing is having a problem. Do people with this disorder have a very low body fat? Yes. Yeah, and there's multiple versions. There's severe, there's intermediate, there's different types. But what we just figured out is that she can store it, but not remove it. That's the take home message of this. Right. Make sense? So what you have a busy weekend to study for your exam, also memorizing the enzymes. So well, the chart from hell. So when I ask you this kind of thing, my task is going to be really good. Let's talk about your test. Just while you're still here. Besides, you know, the usual. Yeah, I didn't answer all my own. So then you're left with the Another day, perhaps. And we're going to do this colon case another time. Yes. Let's talk about your exam and what's going to happen one week from the day. Because I can find it here. I've lost it already. I had it this morning. Where'd it go? Does that mean we get an automatic name? Yeah, I'll, I can still print one. That's never a problem. All right, here we go. Respiratory membrane. Remember what that was? I hope so. There's three questions on it. All right? What should they be like? Where is it found? What would happen to you if you smoke? Why does smoking kill you dead? Those kind of things. All right. There is a question on the concept of diffusion. How do you get the gases to actually go one way or the other? So, for example, why does Grandpa have an oxygen tank? What is that doing to make the gases? Goodness gracious, that damn curve is on here. So the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. I actually give you the curve. You have to use it to calculate some stuff for me. So which way would it shift? How much would you load? How much would you unload? What organ might that be? That kind of stuff. So use that curve to calculate some stuff. I'm an evil man. There's two questions on the equations regarding oxygen and CO2. So can you give me the equation, what happens when the CO2 goes up, that kind of stuff. So be able to crank me through the acid and oxygen equation. Do you okay so far? Mm -hmm. All right. G, 
Gee, a whole page of a big chart. I wonder what that could be on. Oh, digestion. So thou shalt know the digestive chart and perfectly well thou shalt. So I could just give you a blank one. I kind of did. I could have someone filled in, ask the other stuff. I could put it in words. You don't know because I'm a little man. But thou shalt know source, product, pro uh, substrates, pH, everything about every organ in the world. Okay, then there's a couple questions on sphincters. Which sphincters are where? Do they open or close when this happens or that happens? Then there are about three questions on the phases you learned today. So what happens in the gastric phase? Who's talking to whom? What hormones are made? Is the food going this way or that? In the intestinal phase, that kind of stuff. If you, walk, if you were a cheeseburger going through, what would you do in each step? Okay. There are some specific questions on the hormones of digestion. You have secretin, CCK, gastrin, and leptin. Make sure you know what each of those hormones does, where they're made. What would happen if Jonathan didn't have CCK? What would happen to me? He'd die. Yes, I would. Okay. okay, there's a question on the absorptive and post-absorptive phases. What happens in when you absorb? That's using the lysis and genesis words. So if I do lipogenesis, what's happening to me? Why would I do that? Good. Then there are about three questions on the enzymes used in metabolism. So like tonight, if you don't have a dehydrogenase, which, sec which part is affected? What would happen to you if you did that? Okay, so again, you don't have to label the little pages, but that's kind of cool to know. Just know which enzymes are in which category for the three. Okay. Coupled with that, there's a vitamin question, knowing which ones are fat versus water and relating it to those enzymes. Okay. I'm trying to think. I think that kind of covers all of it. So right now it's about 40 questions, 40 points so far. The chart's most of it. The chart's about a third of that. Makes sense? Cool as much? All right. About a third. Uh, how you breathe and the path of the air. So you can ask any questions, you can bail early. Remember, you're supposed to have a group signed up by tonight. If you haven't told me already who your group is for your project, you can start to let people know when they're going. Do you want to go next week? Do you want to go next week?